It was supposed to be a routine drive home for Darren Matthews, a black journalist in his mid-thirties. The streetlights flickered as he drove through a quiet neighborhood on the outskirts of the city. He was deep in thought about his latest investigative piece on local corruption, unaware of the police cruiser tailing him. The flashing red and blue lights came out of nowhere, signaling him to pull over. As Darren pulled his car to the side, his mind raced through the possibilities. He hadn't been speeding, hadn't run a light. There was no reason for him to be stopped. His hands tightened on the steering wheel as he watched the white officer, towering and broad-shouldered, approach his vehicle. Something about the officer's swagger told Darren that this wasn't going to be a simple interaction. License and registration, the officer demanded without a greeting, his tone sharp and cold. Darren complied, his hands steady as he handed over the documents. The officer, Officer Brad Coleman, barely glanced at the papers before asking, What are you doing in this neighborhood? The question carried an implication Darren had heard too many times before. He didn't belong here. Darren kept his response calm, explaining he was just driving home. But it didn't matter. The officer had already decided Darren was trouble. Step out of the car, Coleman ordered, his voice louder now. Darren's heart sank. He had seen too many stories like this. Routine stops turning into something much worse. As he stepped out of the car, he felt the eyes of passing motorists and nearby pedestrians on him. The humiliation was just beginning. As Darren stood by the side of the road, Officer Coleman began to search him without explanation. His rough hands patted Darren down, more for show than actual safety. Darren's mind raced. This wasn't just an act of power. It was a deliberate attempt to humiliate him in public. Coleman knew exactly what he was doing. Got anything on you? Drugs? Weapons? Coleman asked mockingly, loud enough for people across the street to hear. Darren clenched his jaw but stayed silent. He knew better than to argue. Coleman's smirk grew wider, clearly enjoying the control he had over Darren. He tossed Darren's wallet on the ground, making him bend down to pick it up. The crowd of onlookers grew larger, some recording the scene on their phones. Humiliation burned in Darren's chest, but he remained composed. He couldn't afford to lose his temper. Not now, not here. The last thing he needed was for this situation to spiral further out of control. As Coleman's taunts grew more aggressive, Darren reminded himself that he was a journalist, trained to observe, to stay calm under pressure. But this wasn't just another story. This was happening to him in real time. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Coleman stepped back, his expression one of pure disdain. You're free to go, he sneered, but the damage was done. Darren was left standing by his car, his dignity in pieces, while the crowd dispersed, some shaking their heads, others posting videos online. But this wasn't the end. Darren knew it. Something about the officer's demeanor was off, and Darren was determined to find out what. Back in his car, Darren sat for a moment, letting the anger and humiliation wash over him. He had always been a fighter for justice, exposing the wrongdoings of those in power through his investigative reporting. But now the tables had turned, and he had become the victim. As he replayed the events in his mind, a fire ignited inside him. He wasn't going to let this slide. He scrolled through social media, already seeing clips of his humiliation spreading across the internet. The comments were a mix of outrage and indifference, but the video was gaining traction. Darren realized that this could be his chance to turn the situation into something bigger. This wasn't just about him. This was about exposing a pattern of abuse and corruption within the police force, something he had suspected for years. Officer Brad Coleman had made a mistake in targeting Darren. This wasn't going to be a story that faded into the background. Darren had connections, resources, and a platform. But more importantly, he had the determination to dig deeper into Coleman's past. Something told Darren that this wasn't the officer's first time abusing his power, and if there was dirt to uncover, Darren would find it. That night, Darren opened his laptop and began his research. It started with Coleman's public records, his years on the force, his commendations, and any complaints filed against him. What he found was just the beginning of a much larger, darker story. Darren had stumbled upon something far bigger than a routine traffic stop. Officer Coleman wasn't just a bad cop. 
he was a key player in a much larger web of corruption. As Darren dug deeper into Officer Coleman's history, things started to fall into place. Coleman wasn't just an officer with a bad attitude. He had a troubling record. Multiple complaints of excessive force, racial profiling, and misconduct had been filed against him over the years. But none had ever resulted in any serious consequences. It seemed that every time a complaint was lodged, it was swept under the rug. The more Darren searched, the more he uncovered. Coleman had powerful connections within the department, people who were protecting him. These weren't just isolated incidents. This was a pattern. Darren found reports of other black men and women who had been targeted by Coleman, many of whom had no voice, no platform to tell their stories. Darren realized that what had happened to him was part of something much larger. But there was more. Darren discovered that Coleman had been involved in several shady operations during his time on the force. There were rumors of his ties to organized crime, specifically a local gang that was known to operate under the protection of certain police officers. Darren's gut told him that Coleman wasn't just an arrogant cop. He was working with criminals, using his badge to shield their activities. This discovery sent chills down Darren's spine. He had uncovered corruption before, but this felt different. This was bigger than anything he had investigated in the past. He knew that if he continued down this path, it wouldn't just be about exposing Coleman. It would mean taking on the entire corrupt system that protected him. But Darren wasn't one to back down from a fight, especially when the truth was at stake. The weight of what Darren had uncovered pressed down on him as he sat in his small apartment, staring at the piles of documents and digital files spread out before him. He had exposed corruption before, but this was on another level. This wasn't just about one dirty cop. This was a system, a network of officers, officials, and criminals, all working together to protect each other. The deeper he dug, the darker the story became. But with the truth came danger. Darren knew that going after someone like Officer Coleman and the network that protected him wasn't going to be easy. He had seen what happened to other journalists who had tried to take on powerful institutions. They were silenced, their careers destroyed, their reputations tarnished. But Darren couldn't let this go. He had to tell this story, not just for himself, but for all the people who had been wronged by Coleman and his cronies. He began drafting his article, carefully outlining the facts, the evidence, and the testimonies he had gathered. He reached out to other victims of Coleman's abuse, hearing their stories and adding them to his growing case. The more he wrote, the more he realized that this wasn't just an article. It was a bombshell, one that could bring down an entire network of corruption. But Darren knew that once he published the story, there would be no going back. He would be putting a target on his back, and Coleman and his allies wouldn't take it lying down. He had to prepare for the backlash, for the threats, and for the danger that would inevitably follow. But Darren was ready. He had the truth on his side, and he wasn't going to let fear stop him from exposing it. The threat started almost immediately after Darren began making inquiries around Officer Coleman's past. At first, they were subtle, a hang-up call in the middle of the night, a strange car parked outside his apartment for hours at a time. But as Darren pressed forward with his investigation, the intimidation tactics became more direct. Anonymous messages were left in his mailbox, warning him to back off or face the consequences. Darren wasn't easily rattled, but the growing sense of unease was impossible to ignore. He had dealt with pushback before in his career as a journalist, but this felt different. The power behind Coleman and his network was stronger than anything he had gone up against. Whoever was protecting Coleman didn't just want Darren to stop, they wanted to silence him for good. Despite the threats, Darren refused to back down. If anything, the intimidation only fueled his determination to expose the truth. He reached out to his contacts in the media, making sure that others knew what he was working on. He knew that the more people who were aware of his investigation, the harder it would be for Coleman and his allies to make him disappear quietly. He wasn't just working in the shadows, he was shining a spotlight on the corruption. But the threats continued to escalate. One night, Darren returned home to find his apartment ransacked. His files were scattered, his laptop destroyed. It was clear that whoever had broken in wasn't just looking for something, they were sending a message.
Darren's heart raced as he surveyed the damage, but his resolve only strengthened. They had made one critical mistake. They had underestimated him. As the pressure mounted, Darren realized he needed help. He couldn't take on Coleman and his corrupt network alone. That's when he reached out to a trusted ally, Sarah Carter, a fellow journalist and someone who had her own history of taking on powerful figures. Sarah had a reputation for being relentless, and Darren knew that if anyone could help him navigate the dangerous waters ahead, it was her. Sarah had been following Darren's investigation from afar, and when he called her, she didn't hesitate to offer her support. She knew what Darren was up against, and she had her own contacts within law enforcement and the media. Together, they made a formidable team. Sarah brought fresh eyes to the case, helping Darren dig even deeper into Coleman's connections and the network of corruption that protected him. With Sarah's help, Darren was able to uncover even more damning evidence. They found proof that Coleman had been receiving large sums of money from a local crime syndicate in exchange for protection. The money was funneled through shell companies, making it difficult to trace, but with Sarah's expertise, they were able to follow the trail. The deeper they went, the clearer it became that this wasn't just about Coleman, it was about an entire system of corruption that reached far beyond the police force. As the two journalists worked side by side, they knew they were getting closer to the truth, but they also knew that the danger was increasing. The more they uncovered, the more desperate Coleman and his allies would become. But Darren and Sarah were determined to see it through. They had the evidence, and now they just needed to make sure it saw the light of day. Darren and Sarah's investigation had reached a critical point. They had the evidence they needed to expose Coleman and the network of corruption, but they still had to be careful. One wrong move and everything could fall apart. That's when Darren received a tip from an unexpected source, someone within the police department who wanted to see Coleman brought down. The source, who went by the name Raven, had been working in the department for years and had seen firsthand the corruption that had taken root. Raven had stayed quiet out of fear for their safety. But after seeing what happened to Darren, they decided it was time to act. Through encrypted messages, Raven provided Darren with internal documents that confirmed everything he had suspected, and more. The documents showed a pattern of cover-ups, bribes, and intimidation tactics that stretched back years. Officers who tried to speak out were silenced or forced out of the department. The criminal syndicate that Coleman was protecting had its fingers in every part of the city, from the drug trade to real estate scams, and it was all being shielded by a handful of powerful people within the police force. With Raven's help, Darren and Sarah pieced together the final parts of the puzzle. They now had enough evidence to not only expose Coleman, but also take down the entire corrupt system. But they knew they had to move fast. If Coleman or his allies caught wind of the leak, they would do whatever it took to stop the story from getting out. As Darren and Sarah prepared to publish their story, the pressure intensified. They knew that once the article was live, the fallout would be immediate and explosive, but they also knew that they had to get it right. Every fact had to be verified, every source protected. If even one part of the story was wrong, it could give Coleman and his allies the ammunition they needed to discredit the entire investigation. The newsroom buzzed with activity as the deadline for publication approached. Darren and Sarah worked tirelessly, reviewing the evidence one last time, making sure that everything was airtight. They had already sent copies of the documents to their editors and legal teams, ensuring that the story couldn't be buried, even if something happened to them. The truth was ready to come out. But as the clock ticked closer to the deadline, Darren couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to go wrong. The threats had continued, and he had noticed men watching him from a distance their faces familiar from the criminal syndicate he had been investigating. He knew that once the story was published, he would no longer be safe, but it was a risk he was willing to take. Finally, the moment arrived. With one last click, Darren sent the article to be published. The headline was bold, the evidence undeniable. The story was out there now, and there was no turning back. Darren and Sarah braced themselves for the fallout, knowing that the truth they had uncovered would change everything. The story hit the media like a bomb. Within minutes of publication, social media was flooded with reactions. News outlets picked up the story, and soon the headlines were everywhere. 
Police officer linked to crime syndicate in shocking expose. Journalists uncover widespread corruption in local police department. Darren and Sarah watched as their work spread across the country. The truth finally out in the open. The reaction was immediate. Protests erupted outside the police station, with people demanding accountability and justice. The city's mayor called for an emergency meeting to address the scandal, while the police chief held a press conference to try and contain the fallout. But the damage was done. Darren and Sarah had exposed a rot that went deep into the heart of the city's institutions, and there was no way to cover it up now. Officer Coleman, the man who had humiliated Darren just days before, was at the center of the storm. As reporters camped outside his home, his name became synonymous with corruption. The investigation into his actions had already begun, and it was only a matter of time before he would face charges. His arrogance, his abuse of power, it had all led to this moment. But for Darren, the victory was bittersweet. He had exposed the truth, but he knew the fight wasn't over. The system was still broken, and it would take more than one article to fix it. But for now, he had won a small but significant battle. He had taken on the corruption that had plagued his city and come out on top. The fallout from the article was immediate and intense. Within hours of its publication, Officer Coleman was placed on administrative leave pending an internal investigation. The public outcry was growing louder by the minute, with protesters gathering outside the police station, demanding transparency and justice. The local government was scrambling to control the narrative, but the evidence Darren and Sarah had uncovered was too damning to be dismissed. Calls for Coleman's resignation came from all corners, activist groups, community leaders, and even fellow officers who were shocked by the depth of his involvement with the criminal syndicate. But this was just the beginning. Darren knew that Coleman was only a small piece of a much larger puzzle. The real challenge would be exposing the powerful figures who had been protecting him all along. Meanwhile, Darren and Sarah found themselves in the media spotlight. Journalists from across the country wanted interviews, and news outlets were eager to pick up their story. But with that attention came new risks. Darren had already received several more threatening messages, and he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He knew that the people behind Coleman wouldn't go down without a fight. Still, Darren was determined to press forward. He wasn't going to let fear stop him from finishing what he had started. The public had a right to know the full story, and he wasn't about to back down now. He had uncovered the truth, and now it was time to make sure the people responsible for the corruption were held accountable. As the investigation into Coleman's activities ramped up, he remained defiant. In a public statement, Coleman denied all the accusations, claiming that he was being framed. He pointed the finger at Darren, accusing him of fabricating evidence and twisting the truth to fit a narrative. This is nothing more than a witch hunt, Coleman told reporters. I have served this community for years, and I will not be brought down by lies. But the evidence against him was overwhelming. Darren had meticulously gathered documents, testimonies, and financial records that linked Coleman to the criminal syndicate. Internal affairs was already deep into their investigation and sources within the department confirmed that the charges against Coleman were likely to stick. Still, Coleman's refusal to admit guilt only fueled the public's anger. Darren watched Coleman's denial unfold with a mixture of frustration and resolve. He knew that Coleman's words were a desperate attempt to save face, but they still had the potential to sway public opinion. Darren had seen it before. Powerful men using denial and deflection to escape accountability. But this time, Darren wasn't going to let that happen. He had the truth on his side, and he was ready to fight back. Sarah, ever the pragmatist, reminded Darren that this was just the beginning. We've got the upper hand, she told him. But Coleman's not going down without a fight. We need to stay one step ahead. Darren agreed. They had started a battle that would only get fiercer as the truth continued to unravel. And while Coleman might deny his role in the corruption, Darren knew that the facts would speak for themselves. The community wasn't buying Coleman's denials. The public protest grew larger and more organized, with local activists leading the charge. They demanded justice not only for Darren, but for all the people who had been victimized by Coleman's abuse of power. The protests outside the police station became a daily event, with signs and chants calling for reform within the entire department. 
community leaders took to the airwaves, sharing stories of others who had been harassed or brutalized by Coleman and officers like him. One by one, people who had been too afraid to speak out came forward, sharing their own experiences of racial profiling, false arrests, and police brutality. It became clear that Coleman's actions weren't isolated incidents. They were part of a larger pattern of systemic abuse within the department. Darren found himself at the center of the movement. The video of his humiliating encounter with Coleman, coupled with the article exposing the corruption, had made him a symbol of the fight for justice. But Darren wasn't interested in being a hero. He was focused on the bigger picture, holding not just Coleman, but the entire corrupt system accountable. As the protests continued, Darren and Sarah worked tirelessly behind the scenes, gathering more evidence, interviewing more victims, and preparing for what would come next. The community was on their side, but they knew they were up against powerful forces. The fight wasn't over, but Darren could feel a shift happening. People were waking up, and the system that had protected Coleman for so long was starting to crumble. Late one night, as Darren was going over the final details of the next article with Sarah, his phone buzzed with an unknown number. He hesitated, but curiosity got the better of him. Mr. Matthews, you're in way over your head, the voice on the other end said. It was low, gravelly, and threatening. Darren's blood ran cold. Back off while you still can. The warning wasn't the first he had received, but this one felt different. It wasn't a vague threat or a random note. It was a direct message from someone who clearly knew what he was doing. Darren's mind raced as the caller continued. You don't know who you're dealing with. Walk away or you'll regret it. And then the line went dead. Darren stared at his phone, his heart pounding. He had expected pushback, but this was the first time he had felt truly shaken. Sarah looked up from her laptop, noticing the change in his demeanor. What is it? she asked. Darren relayed the conversation, and Sarah's face darkened. They're scared, she said. That means we're getting close. Despite the warning, Darren knew he couldn't stop now. Whoever was behind Coleman's protection was trying to silence him, but that only made him more determined. He and Sarah doubled down, making sure their sources were protected and that every step they took was calculated. The next article would expose even more, and Darren knew that once it was out, there would be no turning back. A week after the first article shook the city, Darren and Sarah were ready to release the second part of their expose. This one was even more explosive, naming names and detailing the connections between Officer Coleman, the criminal syndicate, and several high-ranking officials within the police department and city government. It wasn't just about Coleman anymore. It was about an entire network of corruption. The second article hit the media like a bombshell. It laid bare the extent of the corruption, with documents, emails, and financial records that tied the city's elite to organized crime. Darren and Sarah had uncovered a decades-long conspiracy that had allowed criminals to operate with impunity while the police looked the other way. The article made it clear that Coleman was just the tip of the iceberg. The public's reaction was swift and unforgiving. Protests swelled in size, and city officials were forced to hold emergency meetings to address the growing scandal. Local news stations couldn't cover the story fast enough, and national outlets began to take notice. The city was in chaos, and Darren and Sarah's work was at the center of it all. But with the success of the article came new dangers. Darren knew that the more he exposed, the more desperate the people behind Coleman would become. He was shining a light on a system that had thrived in the shadows for years, and those shadows were fighting back. But Darren was ready. He had come too far to stop now. Don't miss the next chapter. Subscribe to the channel to see how Darren's investigation continues to unravel the web of corruption. Officer Brad Coleman was in hiding. After the second article was published, he had been placed on indefinite suspension, and Internal Affairs had launched a formal investigation into his connections with the criminal syndicate. But as the evidence against him mounted, Coleman knew his days were numbered. Rather than face the consequences, he fled. News of Coleman's disappearance spread quickly. Some speculated that he had left the city, while others believed he was being protected by the very criminals he had once shielded. Darren and Sarah kept digging, 
knowing that finding Coleman could be the key to taking down the entire corrupt network. But for now, he had vanished, and the city was left reeling. The public's frustration grew as weeks passed without any sign of Coleman. Protests outside the police station turned into demands for answers. How could a man so deeply involved in corruption simply disappear? The police chief promised to find him, but Darren wasn't convinced. Coleman knew too much, and there were too many people who would rather see him gone than on trial. Despite the setback, Darren and Sarah pressed on. They continued their investigation, now focusing on the people who had helped Coleman escape justice. They knew that Coleman couldn't have acted alone. Someone had helped him disappear, and they were determined to find out who. With Coleman on the run and the corruption scandal still unfolding, the city was plunged into chaos. Protests had grown larger, more organized, and more demanding. People were no longer just calling for Coleman's arrest. They wanted a full overhaul of the police department and the resignation of several city officials who had been implicated in the scandal. The mayor, who had initially tried to distance himself from the controversy, was now in the hot seat. His connections to some of the people involved in the criminal syndicate were starting to come to light, and his approval ratings were plummeting. Calls for his resignation echoed through the streets as protesters marched on City Hall. Darren and Sarah watched the events unfold with a sense of both pride and urgency. Their investigation had exposed a deep-rooted problem, but the work was far from over. The city was teetering on the edge, and it was clear that the people in power were scrambling to cover their tracks. Darren knew that this was the moment when things could either change for the better or fall apart completely. As the protests grew louder, so did the threats. Darren and Sarah had been receiving messages warning them to stop, but they couldn't afford to back down now. They had uncovered too much, and the city was demanding justice. The next few weeks would be critical, and Darren knew that they had to stay ahead of the people trying to silence them. As the investigation into Coleman and the city's corruption continued, Darren and Sarah received an unexpected break. One of Coleman's closest allies within the police department, a senior officer named Lieutenant Frank Reynolds, reached out to them through an anonymous source. Reynolds had been part of the network that protected Coleman for years, but now he was willing to talk. Reynolds had grown disillusioned with the corruption he had once been a part of. The fallout from Darren's articles had shaken him, and he realized that the truth was going to come out, whether he helped or not. Rather than go down with the sinking ship, Reynolds decided to cooperate, offering Darren and Sarah inside information on the inner workings of the corrupt network. The interview with Reynolds was tense but revealing. He provided details that connected the dots between the police department, the city's criminal syndicate, and several high-ranking officials. Reynolds knew where the bodies were buried, figuratively and literally. His testimony was the final piece of the puzzle that Darren and Sarah needed to take down the entire system. With Reynolds' help, Darren and Sarah prepared for their next article. This one would be the most explosive yet, naming not just Coleman, but several other key figures in the city's government and police force. They knew that once the article was published, there would be no turning back. The city's most powerful people were about to be exposed, and Darren could feel the weight of what was coming. The morning the final article was published, the city seemed to hold its breath. Darren and Sarah had spent weeks preparing it, making sure every fact was checked, every source protected. The article named names laid out the full scope of the corruption and implicated some of the most powerful figures in the city, including the police chief and several city council members. As soon as the article went live, the reaction was immediate. News outlets from across the country picked up the story and social media exploded with outrage. People who had once believed the system was unshakable were now seeing the full extent of the rot that had taken hold of their city. Protests turned into celebrations as the community realized that change was finally possible. The police chief resigned within hours of the article's publication and several city officials were placed under investigation. Darren and Sarah's phones buzzed nonstop with messages from journalists, activists, and victims of the corruption who were finally ready to tell their stories. It was the moment Darren had been working toward, but it felt almost surreal. But even as the city celebrated, Darren knew that the fight wasn't over. There were still people in power who would try to stop the reforms from happening, and the criminal syndicate wasn't going to disappear overnight. 
But for now, Darren allowed himself a moment of satisfaction. He had exposed the truth, and the city was finally ready to listen. Just when Darren thought things were settling down, the criminal syndicate made its move. In a brazen act of retaliation, one of Darren's key sources was attacked in broad daylight. The message was clear. The people behind Coleman were still out there, and they were willing to go to extreme lengths to protect themselves. The attack shook Darren to his core. He had always known that the syndicate was dangerous, but this was different. They weren't just threatening him, they were targeting the people who had helped him bring the truth to light. Darren felt a surge of guilt as he visited his source in the hospital, but the source, a former gang member turned informant, refused to back down. They're scared, he told Darren. That means you're winning. But the attack was a reminder that the fight was far from over. Darren and Sarah doubled their security measures, knowing that they were now targets. The criminal syndicate was still out there, and they wouldn't go down without a fight. But Darren wasn't about to let fear stop him now. He had come too far, and he knew that the only way to truly win was to keep pushing forward. With the support of the community and a growing network of allies, Darren and Sarah continued their investigation, determined to bring the last pieces of the puzzle to light. The criminal syndicate had struck back, but Darren knew that their time was running out. The criminal syndicate wasn't just a shadowy group of low-level criminals. It was led by some of the most powerful figures in the city. Darren and Sarah had spent months piecing together the connections, and now they were close to unmasking the leaders behind the operation. Their investigation had revealed a web of financial transactions, illegal deals, and protection rackets that reached all the way to the top. One of the most shocking revelations was the involvement of a prominent city councilman who had been using his position to funnel money to the syndicate in exchange for political favors. Darren and Sarah had the documents to prove it, bank records, emails, and witness testimony. This councilman had been one of the city's most vocal critics of police reform, but behind closed doors, he was profiting from the very corruption he claimed to oppose. The article that would expose him was nearly ready, but Darren knew this would be their riskiest move yet. Taking down a figure as powerful as the councilman would bring even more attention to their work, and the syndicate wouldn't sit quietly while their leaders were exposed. Darren could feel the pressure mounting, but he was ready to make the next move. The city deserved to know the truth. With the community on their side, Darren and Sarah prepared to drop their biggest story yet. The leaders of the syndicate had operated in the shadows for too long, but their time was up. Subscribe to the channel to see how Darren's investigation unravels the final pieces of this dangerous conspiracy. As Darren and Sarah prepared to release their next expose, the city was on edge. The protests had reached a boiling point, and people were demanding more than just resignations. They wanted criminal charges against the leaders of the syndicate and their allies within the government. Tensions were high, and the streets were filled with both hope and fear. The police were under intense scrutiny, with many officers distancing themselves from the department's tarnished reputation. Internal Affairs had launched a full-scale investigation, and several officers had already been placed on leave. But the public wanted more. They wanted justice for the years of corruption, and they weren't willing to wait any longer. Darren and Sarah felt the weight of the moment. They knew that their next article could spark even more chaos, but they also knew that it was necessary. The city was at a tipping point, and the truth was the only thing that could bring real change. As they finalized their story, Darren couldn't help but feel a mix of anxiety and excitement. This was the moment they had been working toward. The city was ready for change, and Darren was determined to give them the truth but he knew that the people they were about to expose wouldn't go down without a fight. The stakes had never been higher, and Darren could feel the danger closing in. Don't miss the next chapter. Subscribe to the channel for the latest updates on Darren's investigation and the city's fight for justice. The article hit the front page of every major news outlet in the city. The headline was bold. Councilman tied to criminal syndicate in shocking corruption scandal. Darren and Sarah had meticulously laid out the evidence, showing the councilman's direct involvement in money laundering, bribery, and his secret dealings with the criminal syndicate. The public's reaction was explosive. Within hours, the councilman was forced to resign, but the damage was done. 
His political career was over, and now the district attorney's office was preparing to bring formal charges against him. Darren and Sarah's work had exposed one of the city's most powerful figures, and the fallout was massive. The councilman's allies were scrambling to distance themselves, but Darren knew there were more connections to uncover. The city was in a state of shock. People who had once trusted the councilman to protect their interests now saw him for what he truly was, a corrupt politician who had sold out his community for personal gain. Protests outside City Hall reached new heights, with activists calling for a complete overhaul of the government. The councilman's downfall was just the beginning. But even as Darren celebrated this victory, he knew that the fight wasn't over. The syndicate still had power, and there were more figures hiding in the shadows. Darren and Sarah were getting closer to the heart of the operation, but with each step forward, the danger increased. Subscribe to stay updated as Darren and Sarah continue their journey to uncover the truth and bring justice to the city. As Darren's investigation continued to expose more powerful figures, the threats against him became impossible to ignore. One evening, while working late at the office, he noticed a black SUV parked across the street. It wasn't the first time he had seen it, but this time the vehicle didn't move for hours. Darren's gut told him something was wrong. He texted Sarah, asking if she had seen anything unusual. Her reply was quick. Be careful. The next morning, Darren woke to find a note slipped under his door. The message was simple but chilling. We know where you live. Stop, or you won't like what happens next. The weight of the threat hit him like a ton of bricks. This was no longer just an investigation. This was personal. Darren took the threat seriously. He knew that the syndicate was growing desperate. They had already attacked one of his sources, and now they were coming for him. But despite the fear gnawing at him, Darren knew he couldn't back down. He contacted law enforcement, increasing security around his home and workplace, but he also knew that the real protection would come from getting the truth out there. Sarah, always calm under pressure, reminded Darren that the threats meant they were on the right track. They're scared, she said. That means we're close. Together, they pushed forward, knowing that they had the power to bring down the remaining pieces of the syndicate. Want to see how this dangerous investigation unfolds? Subscribe now to follow Darren's journey as he faces mounting threats while fighting for the truth. The criminal syndicate that had operated in the shadows for decades was starting to unravel. Darren and Sarah's relentless investigation had exposed key players, and law enforcement was closing in on the rest. Arrests were made daily, and the network of corruption that had protected the syndicate for so long was finally falling apart. Internal affairs had issued warrants for several high-ranking officers who had been complicit in the cover-ups. The DA's office was preparing a massive case that would bring the full weight of the law down on the syndicate's leaders. For the first time, the people who had terrorized the city were facing real consequences. Darren watched as the walls closed in on the criminals who had tried to silence him. But even as the syndicate crumbled, Darren couldn't shake the feeling that something bigger was still out there. There were whispers of a final, elusive figure, the true mastermind behind the entire operation. Darren and Sarah had come so far, but they knew they had to push further. The syndicate was unraveling, but the fight wasn't over yet. As Darren prepared to release his next article, he reflected on the journey so far. He had risked everything to expose the truth, and now, justice was finally within reach. But with each step forward, the danger increased. Darren and Sarah knew that the last piece of the puzzle was the most dangerous of all. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated on Darren's investigation as he gets closer to uncovering the final mastermind behind the syndicate. After months of digging, Darren and Sarah finally uncovered the identity of the true mastermind behind the criminal syndicate. It wasn't just a politician or a dirty cop. It was a high-profile business tycoon who had spent years cultivating relationships with city officials, law enforcement, and criminal organizations to protect his empire. This man had been the puppet master, pulling the strings behind the scenes and controlling the syndicate's every move. The revelation shocked Darren to his core. The tycoon had been a respected figure in the community, donating to charities, sponsoring public events, and presenting himself as a pillar of society.
But behind closed doors, he was a ruthless criminal who had used his wealth and influence to shield his illegal activities. Darren had suspected a powerful figure was behind it all, but he hadn't anticipated just how deep the corruption went. With this new information, Darren and Sarah began preparing their final article. It would be the most dangerous piece they had ever written, but it would also be the one that brought the entire syndicate crashing down. They had the evidence, they had the witnesses, and now they were ready to expose the mastermind behind the city's darkest secrets. As Darren typed the final sentences of the article, he knew that once this story was published, there would be no going back. The tycoon would fight back with everything he had, but Darren was ready. The truth was finally out. Subscribe now to follow Darren's journey as he faces off against the most powerful figure in the city and watch how the final battle for justice unfolds. The morning after Darren and Sarah published the article exposing the business tycoon, the city was in an uproar. The revelation that such a powerful figure had been behind the corruption shocked everyone, from local politicians to the citizens who had once admired him. Darren's phone rang constantly with calls from reporters, activists, and law enforcement officials, all wanting more details. But Darren knew that the tycoon wasn't going to go down without a fight. Within hours of the article's publication, the tycoon's lawyers had filed a defamation lawsuit against Darren and Sarah claiming that their investigation was based on lies and fabrications. It was a bold move, but Darren had expected it. The tycoon was trying to use his wealth and influence to silence them, just as he had silenced so many others before. Despite the lawsuit, Darren stood firm. The evidence was undeniable, and the public was on his side. Law enforcement had already begun their investigation into the tycoon's activities, and more witnesses were coming forward every day. The tide was turning, and Darren knew that the truth would prevail in the end. The final confrontation was looming, and Darren was ready. He had exposed the corruption, uncovered the mastermind, and now it was time to bring justice to the city. The fight wasn't over, but Darren knew that victory was within reach. Subscribe to see how the final showdown between Darren and the corrupt tycoon unfolds, and stay tuned for the conclusion to this gripping investigation. In the weeks following the final article, the legal system worked swiftly. The evidence Darren and Sarah had uncovered was too compelling to ignore, and law enforcement moved quickly to arrest the business tycoon and his associates. The trial became the focus of national attention, with news outlets covering every detail of the proceedings. The tycoon's lawyers fought hard, trying to discredit Darren and Sarah's work, but the facts were irrefutable. Witness after witness testified to the tycoon's involvement in the syndicate's criminal activities, and financial records linked him directly to the illegal operations that had terrorized the city for years. The trial was intense, but the outcome was inevitable. In the end, the jury found the tycoon guilty on all charges. He was sentenced to life in prison, and his empire was dismantled. The corrupt officials who had protected him were also held accountable with several receiving long sentences for their roles in the conspiracy. The city had finally seen justice delivered, and Darren's work had been a crucial part of that victory. For Darren and Sarah, the sense of relief was overwhelming. They had faced incredible danger, but in the end, the truth had won. The city had been saved from the grip of corruption, and the people who had suffered under the syndicate's reign could finally begin to heal. Subscribe to the channel to follow more stories of courage, resilience, and the pursuit of justice, just like Darren's. With the criminal syndicate dismantled and its leaders behind bars, the city began the long process of rebuilding. The corruption that had infiltrated nearly every aspect of the government and police force was slowly being rooted out, and new reforms were put in place to prevent anything like this from happening again. The community came together, determined to create a brighter, more just future. Darren and Sarah continued their work, documenting the city's recovery and highlighting the positive changes that were taking place. They were proud of what they had accomplished, but they knew there was still work to be done. The scars of the corruption ran deep, and it would take time for trust to be restored. Community leaders held town hall meetings, inviting citizens to share their ideas for reform and rebuilding. Activists who had once marched in protest we're now working alongside local officials to create a more transparent and accountable government. The city was healing, 
but it wasn't forgetting the lessons it had learned from Darren's investigation. As Darren walked through the city streets, now filled with hope and optimism, he reflected on how far they had come. The battle had been long and difficult, but justice had been served. The city was rebuilding, and for the first time in years, it felt like a place where the truth could thrive. Subscribe to stay informed on stories of hope, resilience, and the pursuit of justice. With the case finally closed and the city beginning to move forward, Darren felt a sense of closure. He and Sarah had risked everything to uncover the truth, and now the story was complete. But as one chapter closed, another was beginning. Darren knew that the fight for justice didn't end with one case. It was an ongoing battle that required vigilance, courage, and determination. Darren and Sarah had become known as the investigative team that took down a city's most powerful criminals, and their work was far from over. New leads were emerging, and there were always more stories to tell. The world was full of corruption, and Darren was ready to continue his mission to shine a light on the darkness. But for now, Darren took a moment to reflect on everything that had happened. The danger, the threats, the victories, it had all been worth it. The city was safer, and the people had reclaimed their power. Darren had learned that the truth was the most powerful weapon of all, and he was ready to wield it again. As Darren sat down at his desk, ready to start his next investigation, he smiled. The work never stopped, but that was exactly how he liked it. Subscribe to the channel to follow Darren's next big investigation and stay tuned for more stories of justice and truth.